Hey, it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com, and today I want to discuss and show you how to fix eight strumming mistakes that will sabotage your sound. Things like selective motion, scooping up strokes, stiff strumming, dragging. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that I've seen come up time and again in beginners and my goal with this lesson is to address pretty much every issue that can affect your strumming because ultimately the whole reason why we put such a focus on strumming is because good strumming tone makes it sound like the song you know i feel like a lot of students misdiagnose their issues and they blame it on the chord switching or something else when in reality proper strumming is 99% of the time, the real gateway to success on guitar. So today we'll diagnose the eight problems and give you solutions for every one of them. By the way, everything that we're going to talk about today is addressed in my beginner guitar course. More information on that later. For now, let's get started with the first strumming issue that I see beginners make. And it's really simple, holding your pick too tight. And this one is totally understandable. You know, when you're getting used to something new, it's easy to get too focused and to tighten up. You know, maybe the chord shapes are drawing your attention and you tense up and you end up holding your pick a little bit too tight and it makes the guitar sound really abrasive, you know? Instead of sounding like this. In both those examples, I literally did the exact same thing, except the second time I just let the pressure off and my pick was kind of, it was nice and loose in my fingers, you know? So this is a really easy fix. And I just make my students write this down on a post-it note. I just write down loose grip and then they put it, they can just put it on top of their guitar. And when they're looking down at their hands, you know, just seeing it in the corner of your eye, it just reminds you to have a loose grip. And you might be asking if I hold it loose, won't I drop my pick? And yeah, that could happen, but it's not a huge deal. Just watch somebody playing guitar live. You know, they'll have their microphone stand and there'll be a bunch of extra picks taped to it, you know, because they're expecting to drop a pick, you know, they're, they're using a loose grip and it's almost meant to happen that you're going to drop a pick. The second mistake is scooping the upstrokes. And we often begin guitar lessons when you're, when you're first starting with downstrokes like this. But then their upstrokes sound like this. It's like you're scooping the guitar strings. Even with a loose grip, it sounds abrasive. And to fix this, when I do a downstroke, my pick is angled this way. And it's just rubbing along the strings, you know, just brushing them. And then when I do an upstroke, it's angled this way. So you have to get used to changing the angle. And I like to just imagine that the pick is a brush and I'm just brushing the strings down and up. And this segues really well into our third problem, which is stiff strumming. A lot of students tend to, on top of holding their pick too tight, they'll tighten up their wrist, they'll tighten up their forearm, and you know, everything's tight up to their elbow and then the motion comes exclusively from their elbow. And this compounds with both of the problems that we already covered. You know, since you're not moving your wrist or your forearm, you're not able to adjust your pick angle or brush the strings. And to fix this, disclaimer, I'm not a physiology expert, but this is how I understand the strumming arm to operate. I think about it in three gears. You have your wrist, which is this motion here, which is kind of just like, you're casting a fishing line. Then there's your forearm, which is like when you open a door, you know, you're just turning a doorknob. And then there's your elbow, which is pretty obvious. You know, it provides the down up motion. And when you're strumming, you want to use all three of those gears together to create a much more complex motion than simply going down and up. So as you practice brushing the strings, I want you to be aware of the interaction between those three gears. Your elbow is moving your pick down and up. And with just your elbow, it sounds not very great, you know? We add the forearm, that little bit of twist, and it kind of puts our pick on a circular path into and out of the strings. And our wrist is just providing little micro adjustments, barely going down and up, but it is. And we want to just focus on smooth strumming and a consistent volume. 
And now that we have the physical motions covered, let's talk about another huge problem. It's a fundamental rhythm issue that you need to overcome in order to feel the beat. I call it selective motion, and that's when you just strum when you need to. Let's say you're doing a pattern and you only move your arm when you need to, like this. Your arm is separate from the rhythm of the song. What you should do is just look at the motions, you know, the, the wrong way and the right way. The, the second one, I call that continuous arm motion, where your arm is always moving down and up. Down on the numbers, up on the ands. One and two and three and four and and from there when your arm is moving to the beat of the song you just make contact with the strings when you need to and not only are you going to be playing a pattern but your arm is constantly moving along to the beat of the song and it acts like a built-in metronome it's tied into the beat when you do it the other way you're constantly pausing and starting and stopping your rhythm. And it's just impossible to keep a steady beat when you're expressing it that way physically. Another issue I see is focusing too much on the mechanics of strumming, prioritizing the down and up strokes and making that your focus. You need to realize that rhythm happens inside first. You need to feel the rhythm inside before you have any chance of letting it out. And a trap that I see people falling into is they don't take the time to develop their internal sense of rhythm. They, they jump past it and go right in to downstrokes and upstrokes before addressing that sense of rhythm. And they get frustrated with a lack of progress. You know, it's putting the cart before the horse, so to speak. So what I like to do to fix that is I'll just tap my lap slow and steady with my strumming hand. And then I'll say some strumming patterns. You know, there's like a bunch like down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up up, down, up. You know, there's there's a ton of different rhythm exercises. I do a whole bunch in my beginner course, including clapping patterns and saying rhythms. You know, this is only one approach out of many. Anyways, one that you can do right now is you can just tap with your strumming arm and go down, 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 up, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Up. And the downs line up with my hand hitting my lap. And I say up when my hand is coming up. And you get used to that. And then instead of hitting your lap, you can mute the strings and you can wave your arm down and up with the beat. Go down, 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 up, down, up. One and two and three and four and. And I just alternate between counting and saying the pattern. And then you could try it. Up, down, up. From there, you'll be in a really good spot to actually try some patterns and it'll be way easier to play them successfully and to like feel that you're doing it right. Now, these last three problems, you know, the first one is dragging and that's simply where you drag your pick through the strings. You know, it's useful in a lot of styles like where you just drag your pick slowly through the strings. But generally, we want like a cohesive sound. You know, we want to activate all the strings at the same time. So we need to move through the strings with a bit more velocity. And sometimes that means making a bigger motion. You know, if you make a small motion, it's hard to get that cohesiveness and you end up dragging, right? Or you can flick with your forearm a bit more. That way you can, you can keep a small motion but by flicking, we're getting the pick through the strings quicker and they all ring out at the same time. The next one is invariable volume or playing with the same volume the entire time, which is great when you're first getting started. You wanna have consistent, even volume. But once you have a handle on the mechanics of strumming, this is pretty easy to incorporate. You know, you just plan it out ahead of time. Like I'm gonna strum the verse softly and then I'm gonna play the chorus with a bit more intensity. And then, you know, you just, You know, you go between those two and you get like a range of volumes that you can make. 
Some of the best advice that I ever got was to practice softly and learning to strum softly will drastically improve your sound. And by becoming comfortable with generating different volume and intensity levels, you're ultimately gonna increase your ability to add expression to your music. The final problem is what I call all or nothing. And that's where you hit all the strings or none of them. And once again, that's totally fine early on, but to hit the next level, you need to be aware that you can strum certain strings in certain places, you know? Um, for instance, you can do a root strum where you just strum the thicker strings and you can go like down. Like I'm still just playing down strokes, but I'm playing a big down stroke and then like a little down stroke. And this adds a lot of variation to your patterns in a really simple way. And you know, you just take patterns that you're already good at and you can just focus on strumming the lower part or the higher part, you know, you could go like, like I'm just strumming like all the strings and then the higher strings. You know, and, and you have different areas that you can attack with those down and up strokes once you have a handle on the main mechanics of it and you're able to aim without stressing out, you know, that's the whole thing is you want to have that relaxed feel first and be really comfortable because if you start aiming for it and that starts making you grip your pick harder, then we're right back at square one. So those are eight strumming mistakes that will sabotage your sound and eight solutions to ensure that you can overcome them. If you enjoyed this lesson, please take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as that's going to help me out a lot when it comes to delivering more lessons like this. And if you want to continue practicing this stuff and a bunch of other things that'll turn you into a confident guitarist, I have a couple of courses that might interest you. There's my complete beginners course, which pretty much 50% of it, even more is rhythm. And you know, this is meant for people who are just getting started and they want to learn all the basic chords and be able to play songs all the way through and make it sound like the song. You know, we learn the blues, we learn a bunch of cool tunes, there's tons of stuff in there. I also have a course, Strumming Made Simple, which is more for late beginners and intermediate players. And that has five modules all about strumming and rhythm, learning to play and sing at the same time, learning rhythms by ear, learning how to figure out what strumming pattern is gonna go with what song, and you know, really hitting the next level. I'm gonna put links to those in the corner and down below if you're interested. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.